The Jesuit father believes that Christ alone is not the only way to salvation, that you can find salvation in Islam. He is wrong. The Catholic Church is afraid. It is afraid because it has forgotten that it has the right to stand up for itself. It has forgotten that it has the right to defend itself. And it's forgotten that it has the right to defend its own communities. No, hold on one second. It, it says, consummated his marriage when she I was know. nine. And then there's others that say she was 19. So the hadiths are not reliable. It's not that the hadiths are not reliable. But they're contradicting. Now notice that even in a small child is the supremacist mindset of Islam. How dare you talk about my religion or we will fight you. Quite recently, the, the Pope has done his first papal visit to the Middle East. And in that, they signed a joint declaration um, that was talking about the need for religious tolerance. And on the back of that, uh, that, that I want to talk about a debate that is occurring within the Catholic Church. Now, when I say debate, I don't actually mean that there is a debate. What I mean is that there is a, a, general, there is a general ignorance uh, amongst my Catholic brethren and a sort of weak, limp-wristed liberal theology that somehow hopes to placate um, aggressive Islam in the hope that perhaps the Pope will keep his job if ever there's a caliphate or that, um, you know, or that, that Christians hope that if, if they just be nice, everyone will leave them alone. But history testifies to the fact that that will not happen. And if you don't believe me, Get in touch with Coptic Christians, get in touch with Christians from Syria and Iraq, get in touch with Christians from Pakistan. And they will tell you the fallacy of thinking that you're suddenly going to find a liberal style tolerance in a caliphate. But what is making the church weak? And of this, I, I mean, particularly, um, it's a liberal form of theology. And I'm just going to use the Catholic Church as an example but it is something that can also apply to certain Episcopalian churches, can also apply to Methodist churches, some Baptist churches, is a liberal theology that believes that the God of Muhammad is the same God of the Christians. And to, to marshal this discussion, I'm going to be quoting at length from an article uh, written by a Jesuit priest, Father Tom Michael, who argues along these lines. So, here's, here's the point. I'm going to read the questions and then I'm going to read the answers that were given by Father Michael, and then I'm going to give my responses to that. So the question that was asked to Father Michael, some Christians and Muslims question whether Allah and God are the same deity. Are they? Father Michael answers. Allah is the name by which Muslims and Arab Christians have for centuries called upon one God. Ancient inscriptions in the Arabian Peninsula seem to indicate that Christians in Arabia already referred to God as Allah before the time of Muhammad. The word Allah literally means the God and is the equivalent of Holtheos in the Greek term used in the New Testament to refer to God. In Arabic translations of the Bible, the name Allah is always used to translate Holtheos. Over centuries, Arab Muslims and Christians have disagreed over many issues, both religious and political, but they have never accused one another of worshipping different gods. Moreover, the people of Malta an almost 100% Catholic country whose language is similar to Arabic also call God Allah, even in the prayers of the Christian liturgy. Now, the use of the term Allah to refer to Hotheos, I have absolutely no problem with. It is true that Arab Christians before Muhammad 
were using Allah to refer to Hothios from the New Testament. And it is also true that pagans in Arabia were referring to a god called Allah as well. This term Allah was in common usage. It was a pagan god and a Christian god. Or at least that would be the logic that you would follow if you said that anyone who worships an Allah is worshipping the same god. Now we wouldn't accuse our pre-Mohammedan Arab Christian brothers of worshipping a pagan god just because they use the term Allah. So we must not conclude, we must not conclude that just because Christians can and I have and do call our Christian god Allah that that is the same God as the Muslim God Allah. Just like we wouldn't conclude that the Christians before Muhammad in Arabia who called God Allah were worshipping the pagan Allah, testified to the, by the fact that Muhammad's father was called Abdullah, slave of Allah, which showed that pagans were using that term as well. Now, some Christians, the question, some Christians have objected that since Muslims' understanding of God is not Trinitarian, how can the God of Muslims and Christians be one and the same? And this is where we start to get into dangerous ground. One could ask the same question about the great figures of the Old Testament, Abraham, Moses, Isaiah or Jeremiah, whose understanding of God was not Trinitarian, or even of figures like John the Baptist and Mary in the New Testament. They all worshipped the one true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and sought to do God's will. It was later Christians' reflection that arrived at the understanding of one God as Trinity. Just as Christians would never claim that Abraham, Moses and John the Baptist worshipped a different God, because they did not understand God's triune nature, so it would be wrong for a Christian to claim that Allah worshipped by Muslims is not the God of the Christians. It is not only Christians who question whether the two communities worship the same God. And this is where I take problem with the arguments that are being marshaled within this erroneous faction of the Catholic Church, which argues that Christians are worshipping the God of the Muslims. Because the fact of the matter is, the revelation of the Trinity in its completeness comes with the, the, the birth of Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. It is at this moment that God is fully revealed as Trinitarian. And so it would be wrong of us as Trinitarian Christians, the inheritors of the Abrahamic Covenant, to believe that those before that time could have known. They only saw in shadow in part, as Idaia does. They only saw in shadow and in figure the Trinité. They only saw in, in, in a shadow form. It wasn't until Christ's birth and the coming of the Holy Spirit that the Trinity was the, the true deity. And so, because Muhammad comes after this revelation, 700 years after, it cannot be that God would bring about a new revelation, a revelation that contradicts the former revelation. And this is the problem with this kind of argument. They are trying to do double talk. They're trying to say that Muslims worship the Christian God without saying that Muhammad was a prophet. And you can't do it. Hans Kung, in his book, Islam, makes the same kind of equivocations. He tries to blur the line between saying that Muslims worship the same God of Christians without actually having the balls to follow through on that logic and say Muhammad was a prophet. You can't have both. Either Muhammad was a prophet, in which case pack up Christianity and clear off, or Muhammad wasn't a prophet, in which case do not say that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Some Muslims accuse Christians of worshipping three gods. Why? That is a question to the Jesuit father. Here's what he replies. This is based on the view 
that Christian doctrine of one God in three persons constitutes a kind of committee, a sort of division of labour among three individuals who share in the work of creating, saving and judging humankind. All theologians and church teachings agree that this is a misunderstanding of Christian faith. Yet Muslims may be excused for holding this distorted view, for that is the way the Christian doctrine has often been presented to them. This is where I'm just going to interrupt the flow of the, the text. Because the father is wrong. The reason why Muslims believe that Christians worship three gods is because the Quran tells them that we worship three gods. And if, as he says, all church fathers and all church teaching contradict that, that means that the Quran is in error. But the Jesuit father hasn't got the balls just to say the Quran was wrong. Because it is wrong. And according to the Quran, if it's wrong on just one thing, ladies and gentlemen, it's not from God. So it's wrong about the fact that we worship three gods because we don't. We worship one God. And so therefore, according to the Quranic standard, it's not from God. Which means, according to their own logic, it's false. But the father hasn't got the balls to stand up for his faith. And too many Catholics in the Holy Catholic Church don't have the balls to stand up for their faith. And you need to. You need to stand up for what's true. Because the Christian faith, if you are a disciple of Jesus, it means that you are committed to a radical search for truth, a radical honesty. And honesty and truth means you say it as it is, right. not as the world wants it to be. So, the Jesuit father continues, the ancient councils of the church like those of Nicaea, Ephesus and Chalcedon actually define Christian faith as holding to one God in three hypostases. That Greek word is often rendered as persons in English, but according to Karl Barth, a leading Lutheran theologian of the past century, it means a way of being. According to Karl Rayner, one of the Catholic Church's most important theologians in recent times, it is a mode of subsisting. That is a way of being and acting. In other words, Christian faith affirms one God who has three essential, eternal ways of being and acting. The one eternal God has an eternal message in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus incarnated that message in that it became visible in him, in the way he lived and what he taught. But this same God actually lives and moves in all creation, from the smallest subatomic particle of the molecular science to the driving force behind super galaxies. There is always something that is not measurable or quantifiable because it is divine. So the father, the church, the, the Jesuit father is trying to fudge the issue. Yeah. He's trying to blur the lines between orthodoxy the, of the Christian faith and Islam. And he's doing it for political reasons. Yeah. And this is the political reason. The Catholic Church is afraid. It is afraid because it has forgotten that it has the right to stand up for itself. It has forgotten that it has the right to defend itself. And it's forgotten that it has the right to defend its own communities. And so, because it cannot galvanize itself to defend its own, it is seeking instead to placate the bully. It is seeking instead to find some point of existence that the bully is willing to accept. And that is a narrative that is also true in large sections of liberal society. The liberal elites are afraid. They do not want to stand up to an aggressive Islam because they fear the consequences of doing so. And the reality is that the price of their cowardice 
is that they are willing to throw our civilization in the bin so that they can placate the aggressive bullies. And that is not a way that you can survive. You can't survive by being a coward. You survive by knowing who you are, by standing up for what you believe in, by standing up for your values, by standing up for your beliefs and your identity. And you're willing to pay what price you need to pay to defend that against whoever wants to destroy it. Whether that's the cultural Marxists, the liberal progressives, the Islamic militants, or the Nazis, or the nationalists. And we as Christians have a civilization, we have an identity, and we have to defend it, not hide like cowards. A question to the church Jesuit father goes, does this mean that Christians and Muslims are simply saying the same thing in different ways? This is where he contradicts himself completely, bearing in mind the whole direction of his argument, listen to his next answer. Not at all. Islam and Christianity are two different religions and have different teachings and God is able to save both Muslims and Christians if they faithfully follow their respective paths. So the man is a pluralist. The Jesuit father believes that Christ alone is not the only way to salvation, that you can find salvation in Islam. He is wrong. He is wrong because the apostles are clear that there is no other name in the heaven by which man can be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. He is contradicted by his Lord for Jesus said that there is no other way unto the Father except through me. The apostles and your Lord correct you Jesuit father you are in error yes. repent and believe the gospel the another question that was asked to him what does it mean practically speaking that Muslims and Christians worship the one and same God before I get on to that question I want to just allow him to finish his answer to the previous question which I'll repeat does this mean that Christians and Muslims are simply saying the same thing in different words? He continues, what it means though is that both are directing their attention and service and love towards the same merciful and compassionate God. Notice the Islamic language. Notice the capitulation. Notice how now this pluralist this wayward brother has managed to try to dress the gospel in Islamic language. Ooh. Kenneth Cragg, he quotes, a former Anglican Archbishop of Jerusalem, used a grammatical image to describe the relationship between the Christian and Islamic understanding of God. On the subject, God, we agree. On the predicates, we disagree. But here's the problem. If you don't worship the one true God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, if you don't follow him, that one God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are not following God at all. You are not worshipping God at all. You are not a monotheist. You are in error, a heretic or a disbeliever who needs to come to the gospel and repentance. What does it mean, practically speaking, that Muslims and Christians worship one and the same God? The brother evidently wants the attention. So, what does it mean? Brother, I'm going to take a step this way. If you want to listen to me, step with me. If you want to listen to him, stay here. Christ has come to the whole world. So, what does it mean, practically speaking, that Muslims and Christians worship the one and same God? 
it means for one thing that the two communities are not rivals or enemies that is what he says here is what Christ says I have not come to bring peace but a sword that if anyone chooses his mother, his father, or his brother before me, he is not worthy of me. Christ said that those you either gather in with me or scatter abroad, you are either with me or against me. Christ said that those who put their hand to the plow, if they look back, they are not worthy of the kingdom of God. The Christian faith is clear. You cannot be for Christ and for Muhammad at the same time. And the testament of history is clear. We Christians have endured 1400 years of continuous persecution and discrimination at the hands of Muslims. We do not need to hear lectures from liberal politicians and the liberal media about Islamic tolerance because we have 1400 years of martyrs, persecution, desecration of churches, murderers of Christians who left Islam political, economic and social discrimination oh, that crusade. tell us that tell us that what people. it means to live under a caliphate. The brother mentions the Crusades but he forgets that the Crusades were a response to seven centuries of Islamic aggression. Muslims invaded Christian Syria. Christian Lebanon, Christian Palestine, Christian Egypt, Christian Tunisia, Christian Libya, Christian Algeria, Christian Morocco, Christian Spain, Christian Sicily, Christian Turkey, Christian Greece, Christian Italy, Christian Portugal, all before the First Crusade. They invaded Christian France all before the First Crusade. Don't let them lie. Don't let them lie. We have nothing to be ashamed of about the Crusades. They were a defense of the church against an aggressor. And the KKK is what I forgot to mention. Now. KKK. The Ku Klux Klan. They were hanging black people and they used the Bible yeah, to justify yeah, the murder of black skinned people. Don't let him change the subject, bro. Don't let him change the subject. Don't let him change the subject. He wants to talk about the KKK, yeah, yeah. but he doesn't talk about how Muhammad called black people raisin heads. <laughs> he doesn't talk about. How Allah says that when you go to heaven, he makes you white. But when he sends you to hell, he makes you black. Where Muhammad said that Allah looks like a black man, he doesn't mention that. He doesn't mention that. You're not changing the topic. We're talking about something else. So, the question, the question. Look at the curse of Ham. Sister, curse of Ham. you know as I know, what does it say no in the gospel? Son, no there is neither Greek nor Jew, said, yeah, slave nor free, like man slave. nor woman, all said. are one in Jesus Christ. No, no, Amen. Are you buy a slave? We have black pulse. We have We had black pulse. We had leaders of the church. Our leading theologians were from Africa. Augustine was African. The old these churches are African. Right. We don't religion. need. Religion. He at, says that I'm racist. Look at that I work with the Latino <laughs> and Nigerians, <laughs> but he says that I'm racist. Brother, brother, the so, white people are just. So he wants to hijack the conversation. He wants to hijack the conversation. Your religion is already debunked, friend. When you're, when you're religion, it's tell me, tell me. Muhammad said that Adam was 90 feet tall. Is he right? 
What does he say that? He says so it. What? So what? In a hadith. Was, so what if he was? Was Adam 90 feet tall? I don't know. Tall? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Your prophet you know? was a medieval simpleton who yeah. thought that the oldest man in the world yeah. was 90 feet tall. So? Which means so? that we've all so? been getting shorter. So? Here's the problem. What does that mean? Here's the problem. All the archaeological evidence shows that human oh, beings so have been getting Shelley, taller. Your prophet was Shelley a simpleton who didn't know the truth. Now let me ask you this one, brave man. So, Adam, he was wrong about Adam being 90 feet tall. He was wrong about Adam being 90 feet tall. What else was he wrong about? Do you agree that a 64-year-old man should have sex with a 9-year-old child? Where does it say that? Where does it say that? I'll show you. Where does it say that? I'll show you. And bring me... And bring I will me, show you. bring me authentic hadith, yeah? Yeah, I'm Don't going to. I'm going to bring you. But before I show you, before I show you, answer me the question. Do you agree that a 64-year-old man should have sex with a 9-year-old child? Me personally, no. He personally, no. Good for you. Your conscience is better than your prophet. But now let me show you. I'm going to. I'm going to show you. Are you listening? It doesn't say in the Quran. Are you listening? Are you listening? It doesn't say about her age in the Quran. It says in the hadith. That's not hadith. Do you accept hadith? Do you accept Sahih Adi? I accept Bukhari. He accepts Bukhari. Okay, there you go. Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. You got it here. So the brother says he accepts Sahih Bukhari. He said he wanted to show me where this great prophet called Muhammad, this best example, had sex with a nine year old child. And he said he wants me to show him because his conscience tells him that that is wrong. And it's good that his conscience tells him that that is wrong. But look at what your prophet did. Narrated by Aisha that the prophet married her when she was six years old and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old your prophet your great man had sex with a child your conscience tells you it's wrong you the, it's the time reference. yeah the reference sahih al-bukhari 7 62 64. what does consummation mean consummation means to have sex go and look it up so now we've established that his prophet is an embarrassment to him. I invite you to leave that prophet. No, no, no. Why would I come to Christianity? I went so, past, so I went you would rather follow a paedophile? I went past. What do you mean paedophile? He had sex with a nine year old child. But, what would you call. Okay. Are you, are you going to let me speak or not? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. What if I told you there are some hadiths that say she was 19 years old? What do you think about that? I'd say, show me. I can bring a hadith that says show she was 19. Show me. Sahih. Yeah, 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 only Sahih al Bukhari. Only Sahih al Bukhari. So would you accept that? Show me it. So you only accept the Show me. That, that fit you because actually. here's the problem. Let's do a thought experiment. Let's do a thought experiment. Anyway, let us pretend. Anyway, man and woman. Let us pretend. Let us pretend. Listen, 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 listen. Notice. Listen, listen, no. Listen. No, no. Hold on a minute. Listen, listen, listen. Man, no, no. Notice. Notice. He doesn't want to let me finish. No, I'm going to finish this point then. You can reply. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. I am going to finish this point, then you can reply. So let's help the brother. Let's do a thought experiment. Let us pretend for a second that he produces a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari that says that Aisha was not nine when Muhammad had sex with her, shameful as that is, but that she was 18. That would mean that the hadiths are not reliable because you would have two hadiths from the same source saying completely contradictory things. Where are things. they? Where are they? You are lying today in front of the camera. You jumped in, you don't even know the conversation. Today I will show you these people. You, I'll let him hang himself. Where are they? 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 Today I will show you this is how to debate. These people 
يو ار ا فول ويرز حديث تو حديث شو مي كان اي انسر شو مي حد حديث اوكي اي دونت نيد فروم هاري بوتر لو كان اي انسر اي ويل شو يو يو ار ا مايس ماوس واي شو ده انا وين حد حديث حديث اي ام جوينج تو جيف تو يو سو شو مي حديث Now you are lying. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Shut sure up, then. Shame on you. He, do you notice know how he's still talking? Where are the hadith? He said, "Show me a hadith." Thank you very much. He said, "Show me a hadith." What do you need, Muslim? Now notice, he doesn't actually no, want to no, listen to an answer. Yeah, Where are hadith? He said, "Show me hadith." You said to hadith. I'm going to. Where are they? I am going to. I am going to. So, thank you. Thank you very much. So, the brother said. That's what you did. The brother said, "He's going to." Who's walking away? He's walking away. He's walking away. So, what's the hadith? No, no. He's quoting the tasfia. That's a commentary. He said he was going to show a hadith. Anyway, show me a hadith. Anyway, anyway, Moses and Muhammad married women. Jesus never married. If we, if we follow Jesus. Two thousand years ago, all the human being would be extinct. Notice, he doesn't. He asks a question, but he doesn't want to hear. He said to Hadi, "I'll show him." When you are a fool, your own Sahih Bukhari, seven sixty-three, sixty-five. In UK, sometimes it varies. Give birth to a child. Married her when she was six years old, and he consumed, consummated his marriage when she was nine. Would you have sex with a nine-year-old child? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? No, you were talking to me a minute ago. You are lying. You are walking. You are talking to me a minute ago. You haven't even listened. Islam is not like a Harry Potter. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are stood here today saying that Muhammad is the best example, then you should have no problem, no problem with the idea of a six-year-old man having sex with a nine-year-old child. They are lying. And if your conscience why do you lie? tells you why, why from? that you do have a why, problem why, why, with this, why from? then it is time I respect this that gentleman you find a better example. example. But these people, they you are afraid. Talk to him then. <laughs> why do you lie? So, but why is lying? So, he come here. Hadith. Right. So, show me. Remember, you said you were going to show me a hadith that said she was 18 years old. Show me. Show me. Go on. What does it say? But what I'm saying is, Moses Muhammad married a woman. Married woman is the first sister of Aisha. Jesus never married. This is regarding Aisha. So Asma died when she was 100 years old. So he says, yeah, Asma died in seven. So he says this would make Asma. No, 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 don't know. No, Hadith is not Tasfiyah. The year of so he's quoting Tasfiyah, not Hadith. Aisha, 18 years old. Right. So let's deal with that. Let's deal with that, bro. Let's deal with that. Bro, let's deal with your argument. Let's deal with your argument. Let's deal with your argument because it's foolish. You said you were going to show me a hadith that said she was 18. You haven't. You've shown me a hadith that then a commentator managed to construct an argument from that she was hadith. But I showed you two hadith that said, and they were both Sahih al Bukhari, what you said you would accept, that said she was six years old when she was married and nine when they had sex. So do you accept these hadiths? It says consummated when she was nine in these hadiths. So here's the problem for you. If your tasfia is right, it says it in black and white. I'll read it to you again. No, 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 this is not an opinion. You read it, you read it. What does it say? What, well, read it then. What does it say? I know, I know. How old? She was six. Yeah. And then she to me that night. Thank you. But there's another hadith. So I'm not that's lying then, am I? I'm not saying you're lying. Thank you. I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is that there's various opinions when it comes to that. So, so there is an opinion no. that disagrees with the clear writ of the hadith. No, no. Sorry. the majority of Muslims, we don't know for sure the age of Aisha when she got married. It's, because it says it here, bro. No, Look, no, 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 sorry. Finish, no, hold on one second. Yeah, it it finish. says, finish. consummated his marriage when she I was know. nine. And then there's others that say she was 19. So the hadiths are not reliable. It's not that the hadiths are not reliable. But they're contradicting. 
at that time, they never used to have recorded death dates. They never used to have recorded birth There is, are you telling me that, uh, are you telling me, look, I can tell this brother is not 18 years old. This is no, this is no. I can, I, so you're telling me, you're telling me that a 64 year old man couldn't tell the difference between an 18 year old and a 9 year old? I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about back then, they never had recorded birth dates. You can tell the, way, the difference the way, between a child and an adult, my friend, you don't need the birth dates. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, about what you can tell. I'm talking about facts. What I'm trying to say is Yeah, that, facts. What, what, it says, had sex when she was nine. That's a fact. How do you know that was for sure, though? Because it's Sahi. Sahi. I know it's Sahi. 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 Oh, right. Okay. I see. Well, well, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Human that's genetics right. have changed yeah. dramatically yeah. in the last 1400 years. Yeah. You're talking rubbish. Yes. You're talking yes. rubbish. You know? You're trying to argue yeah. you're that there's rubbish. been some evolutionary oh, no. leap no. in the last 1400 yeah. years yeah. that makes yeah. a nine-year-old yeah. 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 equivalent to an 18-year-old yeah. today. Yeah. That's yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Utter yeah. rubbish. So you must not deal with the fact you're embarrassed by your prophet. So why don't right? This doesn't mean nothing to us. So we follow. I know. We follow the fact that it is Islam. I get it. We follow the I know. That's you you believe the hadiths when they suit you, and you took them in the bin when they don't. You don't believe yet. So leave it there. Go home. No. He came to me. And, and Mary, he came to me. And, and Mary, Mary. He came to me. Was she married Joseph? Was now show me that in the Bible. Mary was told Show me that in the Bible. Go on, Google it. Show me. He's going to show me where in the Bible it says Mary was 12 years old. Go on, Google it. Maybe, maybe the grand oracle of Google will help you. And this, brothers and sisters, is where you will see the difference of the faith of where in the Bible? Jewish, Jewish custom. Where in the Bible? Where in the Bible? What does it say in the Quran that Aisha was nine years old? It's in the Hadith. What does it say in the Quran? It's in Sahih al Bukhari. You said you accepted. Okay. It gets worse for him. It gets worse for him. It gets worse for him. Why, why, why? I'll tell you why. He said, show me in the Quran where it says you shouldn't be having sex with children. Yeah, I'll, oh, so, sorry, she was where, where, where is about Aisha's age? She was so, a listen to this, listen to this. We've established in the hadiths that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old. And rightfully, sure. no, sure. you do in the hadith. So now you don't, Sai, you don't, so you don't accept Sai al Bukhari then? Huh? You don't accept Sai? I do, I do accept oh, you do? So he said she was but, nine. But there's, but there's do you other, accept it? But there's other hadiths I accept as well. So you've got contradictory hadiths and you accept them both? What do you mean contradictory? Your Bible itself is a contradiction. So hold on. So hold on. You're saying to me, you're saying to me, you trust the hadiths. But one hadith says she was nine. You've got two contradictory hadiths. Can you let me support my argument? Two contradictory hadiths. Good, good. For my argument for this is that there was a French uh, historian who studied this. Yeah? What his name is? You should look it up. Yeah? And he said, yeah. I read that, that French historian. Yeah, he said, he said some contradicting later on. Oh yeah, so everyone's contradicting to you. This this French historian, who wasn't a Muslim by the way, said that at that time girls would menstruate a lot earlier than than girls that would nowadays now. So, so their concept of living. So your argument now. is this: if they gonna, bleed, they can finish? breed. Are you gonna let me finish? That is his if argument. You finish, I'm gonna walk that away. is essentially if his you don't argument. Let me finish, I'm, gonna walk I'm gonna away. gonna embarrass you shortly. If you don't let me finish, I'm gonna walk away. You can walk away if you want to. Are you gonna you let me interrupted finish? me, remember? Are you gonna, yeah, you yeah, burst you into me, my conversation, you remember? You were, yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah, about Christianity, yeah. and you burst in attacking Christianity. <laughs> now I've turned it on you. You, you, you want to walk those, away? Are you gonna let me finish? So we've got this French scholar that we don't know the name of that name. said that 1,400 years ago, women used to menstruate early. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Girls still have early periods, but what we know today is that even if, even if, even if, even if they menstruate early, it does not mean that in their mind and their soul they are ready to have sex with adults. Just because they bleed does not mean they can breed. And there are countless wards in hospitals where you will find children in hospitals because they are pregnant before their hips are wide enough 
to give birth. Uh, uncle, what about the Christian priests who rape now, kids? No, this is why Christian Christianity Christian is better who than Islam. Kids in the, in the, in because the he, on one hand, wants to say that Aisha was 18 and not 9 because in his conscience he is embarrassed by his prophet. But then on the other hand, he's trying to give justification by saying that in the past it was okay. But that's the problem with Islam, is that once something becomes a tradition of the prophet, you can't change it. You can't change it. Christianity by comparison says that our ethical conduct can be informed by current knowledge. It can change with what we know as the best knowledge of our time. And we know from the studies of child development that children of nine, even if they menstruate, does not mean that physically and psychologically they are ready to have sex or to enter into a lifelong marriage. How do you know? Go and look up child development research, know? friend. Do you study every woman? Do you study every woman? No, but there are specialists that are. Are you saying that you want to defend Mohammed having sex with a nine-year-old child? She so, choose, choose the really get married. So, she was nine. Oh, he wants to walk away. It's amazing, isn't it? How they want to heckle and interrupt. But the moment they're challenged on their own books and the conduct of their own prophet, they run away. Why? I'll tell you why. Why, Bob? It's because Muslims only come here to challenge Christians on our beliefs. They can't stand it when we challenge them on theirs. That's why they run. So, now ladies and gentlemen, I will go back to what I was originally talking about before I was interrupted. Because today, I was talking about things in the Christian faith, not Islam. And the Muslims came and interrupted me, which is why we had to change topic. So, back to where we were. Talk rubbish on Muslims and expect us not to fight back. Who did you think you are? I believe I'm a Christian, a follower of the Christ, like you should be. Now, notice that even in a small child is the supremacist mindset of Islam. How dare you talk about my religion or we will fight you? That's in a child. What testimony has he given to his parents? Did I see that? No, I didn't. That is the example that he has given of his parents upbringing. That's what he says. Stop lying. So, you're lying to make yourself And we Christians. You know you're wrong. And we Christians. So, do you believe? You think you're right. Do you believe? Do you and believe? You still think they all run away oh, from me. Yeah, yeah. They all run away from me. He's got courage, hasn't he? I respect your courage. He's a little boy. He wants to kill him. He's telling me. He can shout me if he wants to. I walked away because you let me see. Because you know I have the truth. You don't have the right explanation. So, brother, you've interrupted a conversation that I was giving about Christianity. But then you decided to, and then, to, me. You decide to talk No, no, you forced I'm your way into the conversation. You. Yes, you did. You forced so, your so way into I'm the conversation. I'm, 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 like you have done right I'm, 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 now. Like you have done right now. You forced your way into the conversation. Like you have done right now. Again. Can I ask you a question? Is it on topic? Can I ask you a question? Is it on topic? General question. No, I'm talking about this. I know, the age of Aisha is still talking about No, I'm not talking about I wasn't talking about that when you came and interrupted me. You forced your way into a conversation. So, be quiet a second and you'll pick up the topic. Can I ask you a question? So, no, I'm talking on this topic. I'm going to not talk about your religion if you can stop You can't, you can't. So, you can't. Right, so, returning to the interview that was given to the Jesuit father, the one that I have issue with. So the Jesuit father was asked, what does it mean, practically speaking, that Muslims and Christians worship the one and same God? This is what the Jesuit father says. It means for one thing that the two communities are not rivals or enemies, a point that we addressed earlier. 
when Christians hear Muslims being called to prayer, they should be happy, for it is their God who is going to be worshipped and served. When they see good Muslims performing the prayer, fasting in Ramadan, and doing good works like giving to the poor, Christians should praise God for the fact that so many of their Muslim sisters and brothers are doing God's will. Now once again, the brother is contradicted by the apostles because he is essentially saying that all religions worship the same God. So when we hear the Adan from the Minaret, we should give thanks to our God, the Trinitarian God, that Muslims are going to mosque. That is what he is saying. The was created by us. So, but what does it say in the scriptures? It says in Corinthians, It says in the scriptures that you should not be unevenly yoked with the unbeliever. What does Bilal, what does light have to do with darkness or truth falsehood? What do the worshippers of God have to do with the worshippers of Bilal? Nothing. That's what it says in our scriptures. So the Jesuit father stands in contradiction of the apostolic teaching. Jesus was in Africa as a refugee. We black people, we take took care of him. He was a refugee, Jesus, yes. Yes. In a, where is Egypt? In Egypt. Where is Egypt? Which was a Christian country where is Egypt? before the Muslims forcibly conquered it and persecuted the Coptic Christians. And still persecute Coptic Christians today. So, why Jesus took refuge in Egypt then? Answer the question. So, continuing with the discourse. No, I'm not talking about this. You guys have come to interrupt me. I didn't go to you. Do you not understand? Do you hear what you're saying? I do. And yeah. you're asking, why are we getting involved? You are talking man. about our religion. Brother, you talking, brother, you talking back you on never, our religion. This and is the thing. Not to fight back. Muslims you never go to other Muslims who are attacking Christian faith in the park. We never hear Muslims give this lecture to other Muslims. They want to play possum when we critique their religion. They say, oh, you're bullies. You're always talking about Islam. But go around and listen to the main Muslim speakers in the park. They're like Mansour and Hashim. They can't talk five minutes without attacking Christianity. For the past 20 years. You're lecturing the wrong people, son. What do you mean attack? So the question goes on to the Jesuit father. Sorry, the Jesuit father goes on. Similarly, Muslims can regard Christians as fellow monotheists with whom they share some of the most basic orientations to life. They need not regard Christians as kafir or mushriks. Incidentally, kafir and mushriks are two insulting terms that are used regularly by Muslims to refer to Christians. When Christians lived under dimitude in the Islamic Caliphate, they would often be referred to in a derogatory fashion as Mushrik and Kafir. That is equivalent in terms of its emotional impact of calling the black man the N-word. It is a derogatory term. It implies some kind of hypocrisy, failure, uncleanliness. The interview continues. Isn't there a deep point of contact between real submission, true Islam, and the commitment to accept God as the sovereign ruler of one's life and destiny? The Jesuit father replied, is it, is, it, is it this point of contact 
to which the Quran was perhaps referring when it stated, and you will be sorry, and you will find that the closest in affection to those who believe Muslims or those who say we are Christians are among them are priests and monks and they are not arrogant the one God to whom we submit our lives wants all Christian and Muslim to reject arrogance and to come before him together so that God can govern according to his will that was the opinion of the Jesuit father, Tom Michael, who is the ecumenical secretary of the Federation of Asian Bishops. He is a false ecumenist. True ecumenism is to seek the unity of the church because Christ our Lord said, and he prayed, let them be one as I am in you, so that I might be one in them, that they might know, that the world might know that the Father has sent me by the way that they love one another. Let them be one. The church is to strive to its own unity, its own unity, not enter into false ecumenism, worshipping false gods with the worship of the one true God, Yahweh. The commandments are these, I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, and you will not bow down and worship any idol in the heavens above, on the earth, or in the seas below the earth. For I am a jealous God, and those that worship the God of Allah, or seek to mix the worship of Allah with the worship of Yahweh, have entered into error and false ecumenism, and need to repent and believe the gospel. Remember, Father Tom, that you are dust, and you shall return unto dust, and that every man, to every man, is a day appointed to die and the judgment. You are a teacher of the church and will be doubly judged for your teaching.